Minister of Families, Children and Social Development Hussein, Minister of Infrastructure and Communities McKenna. Representatives of the delegation of the Ismaili Imamat, Dr. Mohammed Ibu, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, good evening. My name is Farah Nasser, and it is a pleasure to be your host today and welcome you virtually to the delegation of the Ismaili Imamat. I would like to begin today by acknowledging that the land on which we are virtually gathered is the ancestral territory of the Algonquin Anishinaabek people. The Algonquin peoples have lived on this land since time immemorial, and we are grateful to be here and have the opportunity to be present in this territory. And we today remember all of those who have suffered on these and all other traditional lands, and we offer prayers for healing on the long road to reconciliation and justice. We begin today's proceedings with the singing of our national anthem with lead vocalist Simone Rajan of Calgary. It's going to be followed by the recitation of the Nasheed Ali Mama, a musical composition evoking the history, traditions, and values of the Ismaili Imamat, composed by Amin Bhatia. That was beautiful. Thank you to our lovely vocalists and musicians. It is now my privilege to introduce Dr. Muhammad Ibu, the representative of the delegation of the Ismaili Imamat and the Aga Khan Development Network to Canada. Dr. Ibu was appointed by His Highness the Aga Khan in September of 2014. 
Prior to his appointment in Canada, he served as president of the Aga Khan Council for the United States, and he was His Highness's representative to the United States government and in imamate agreements with Texas, California, and Illinois. Please join me in welcoming Dr. Muhammad Ibu. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Minister of Families, Children, and Social Development of Canada, the Honorable Ahmed Hussain. Minister of Infrastructure and Communities, the Honorable Catherine McKenna. Your Excellencies, members of the Diplomatic Corps, representatives of the Governor General, Parliament, and the Government, distinguished guests, friends, and colleagues. Welcome to the delegation of the Ismaili Imamat here in Ottawa. While we would have wished to have welcomed you here personally today, we are delighted that you could join us for this year's Imamat Day commemoration virtually. And we are especially pleased to be able to welcome Ministers McKenna and Hussain, who have so graciously accepted to be our special guests. I would also like to thank the Prime Minister of Canada, the Right Honourable Justin Trudeau, for his statement on the occasion of Imamat Day. Today, we are commemorating the 64th anniversary of His Highness the Aga Khan's Imamat as the 49th hereditary Imam, or spiritual leader, of the Shia Imami Ismaili Muslims. Bienvenue à la délégation de l'Imamat Ismaili. Nous sommes très heureux que vous, que vous pouvez vous joindre à nous pour la commémoration virtuelle de la journée Imamat cette année. Et j'aimerais remercier les ministres Hussein et McKenna qui ont gracieusement accepté d'être notre invité spatio. Aujourd'hui, nous commémorons le 64e anniversaire de l'Imamat de son Altesse Laga Khan en tant que 49e Imam héréditaire ou chef spirituel des musulmans shiites imami ismailiens. Standing in this space, the delegation of the Ismaili Imamat, some of you may be unfamiliar with what the Ismaili Imamat is. It is the historical institutional office representing the succession of hereditary Ismaili Imams from the first Imam, Hazrat Ali ibn Abu Talib, the Prophet Muhammad's cousin and son-in-law, may peace be upon them, through to the present Imam, His Highness the Aga Khan. Throughout the Ismaili Imamat's 1,400-year-old history, it has sought to uphold the values of a thinking Islam, of pluralism as a fundamental ethic, of the inherent values of human dignity, and of our shared responsibility for the environment. Today, the Imamat is concerned with the improvement of the human and environmental condition through the building of civil society capacity in support of governments. It is in this spirit that over these past six decades, the Aga Khan, through the creation of a network of agencies, which today is known as the Aga Khan Development Network, or AKDN for short, has sought to improve the quality of life of all peoples, irrespective of faith, ethnicity, language, or gender. The AKDN operates in 35 countries, primarily in the developing world, where access to so many of the fundamental opportunities taken for granted in the developed world are still lacking such as quality education, affordable health care, availability of financial resources, access to clean water, the restoration and use of cultural assets. In other words, opportunity for hope and a better quality of life. To achieve this goal, the Imamat, through the AKDN, has developed partnerships with France, Norway, Germany, Portugal, the United Kingdom, the United States, the European Union, and with the UN system, and of course, Canada, amongst others. Together, our partnerships with these donor countries, international financial institutions, and private enterprise have resulted in the AKDN providing each year healthcare to over 5 million patients and education to over 2 million learners. And it has brought food security, safe drinking water and sanitation, clean energy, and financial services to tens of millions of people in Central and South Asia and Sub-Saharan Africa. And in this endeavor, one of the Imamat's most trusted and valued partners has been Canada. Together, over the last three decades, Canada and the AKDN have worked in 15 countries, implementing approximately $700 million in development and humanitarian assistance initiatives from health and empowerment in Central Asia, to education in Eastern and Southern Africa, to the Health Action Plan for Afghanistan, to women's economic empowerment 
in Pakistan and to advancing sexual and reproductive health and rights for women in Mozambique, amongst many other programs around the world. Here in Canada, the Imamat and its institutions have sought to help educate and illuminate the Muslim world's rich contributions to architecture, mathematics, art, culture, science, and knowledge through a multiplicity of physical spaces across the country. These include this very space, the Delegation Building, as well as the Smiley Center in Vancouver, the Aga Khan Garden in Edmonton, and the 17-acre complex that envelops the second Ismaili Center in Canada, the Aga Khan Museum, and the Aga Khan Park in Toronto. These are places and spaces of transparency, enabling environments that promote cultural exchange, openness for dialogue, and the opportunity to come together in intellectually enriching spaces through which barriers can be broken down and new pathways created. I invite all of you to visit these extraordinary spaces. Our shared commitment to the value of pluralism as a necessity for human harmony led to the creation of the Global Center for Pluralism, a 50-50 partnership with the Government of Canada located down the road at 330 Sussex, the fully renovated former war museum now dedicated to fostering peace and pluralism. And finally, the Imamat's partnerships have extended to formal agreements of cooperation with the provinces of Alberta and Ontario, and soon British Columbia, and with collaborations with numerous Canadian universities to share and build knowledge capacity. One of our earliest ventures in the 1980s with McMaster was for the development of the School of Nursing at the Aga Khan University in Karachi, a program that has provided a huge impetus for women in a valued and critical profession. And you will be pleased to know that 2021 saw the first PhD graduate from the AKU in this profession. So on this special occasion, it is a great pleasure to commemorate in this building, not only the Aga Khan's 64th anniversary as Imam, but also the long-standing partnership between the Imamat and Canada, now approaching 50 years. J'aimerais aussi remercier nos partenaires et nos amis autour du monde qui ont travaillé avec nous au cours des 64 dernières années et pour célébrer nos efforts collectifs pour améliorer la qualité de vie des moins, les, des moins fortunés. Merci Canada et, vous, et à vous tous d'avoir participé à cette célébration et surtout les ministres McKenna et Hussein. My wife Karima and I would like to wish you good health and to thank all of you for joining us. Stay safe, stay well, and we look forward to seeing you in person in the near future. Imam Day Mubarak. Thank you, Dr. Ivu, for those enlightening remarks and congratulations on this very special occasion. It is now my distinct pleasure to welcome to the virtual stage the Minister of Families, Children and Social Development, Ahmed Hussain. Minister Hussain was first elected as Member of Parliament in 2015 and then again in 2019. He previously served as Minister of Immigration, Refugees and Citizenship and was appointed to his current role in November of 2019. Please welcome Minister Hussain. Hello everyone, bonjour tout le monde. I'm Ahmed Hussain, Minister for Families, Children and Social Development. July the 11th marks the day that we commemorate His Highness the Aga Khan becoming the 49th hereditary Imam for the Ismaili community around the world. This year, 2021, also marks the 64th anniversary of His Highness being the Imam. This gives us an opportunity as Canadians to recognize and celebrate the contributions that Ismaili Muslims in Canada have made and continue to make to our great country. I want to pay special tribute to His Highness the Aga Khan for always standing up for the Canadian values of peace, justice, and inclusion. Kushi Ali Mubarak. It is now my distinct pleasure to welcome to the virtual stage the Minister of Infrastructure and Communities, Catherine McKenna. Minister McKenna was first elected as Member of Parliament in 2015 and then again in 2019. She previously served as Minister of Environment and Climate Change and was appointed to her current role in November of 2019. Please welcome Minister McKenna. 
Hi, I'm Catherine McKenna. I'm Minister of Infrastructure and Communities for the Government of Canada. And on behalf of the Government of Canada, but also myself personally, uh, I'd like to join so many in commemorating the 64th anniversary of His Highness the Aga Khan becoming the Imam of the Ismaili community. Uh, what the Aga Khan has done, but also the Aga Khan Foundation has done around the world uh, to build a more inclusive world, more diverse world, um, but also to tackle climate change has really been incredible. Looking forward to future partnerships. Thank you very much, Minister McKenna, for your remarks and for your presence here today. It is indeed a privilege. We are delighted to share a statement by the Prime Minister of Canada, the Right Honourable Justin Trudeau, on the occasion of Imamath Day 2021. Today on Imamath Day, we join Muslims in Canada and around the world to celebrate the 64th anniversary of the accession of His Highness Prince Karim Aga Khan IV, the 49th hereditary Imam, spiritual leader of Shia Ismaili Muslims. This year, due to the global COVID-19 pandemic, People will mark this day a bit differently with loved ones at home, but as always, with immense joy. Since becoming Imam, the Aga Khan has worked tirelessly to improve the quality of life of both the Shia Ismaili community and the many places they live around the world. His contributions through the Aga Khan Development Network have helped advance humanitarian causes and civil society, promote health and education, and encourage people to be more active and engaged in their communities. Today, his work is widely recognized by governments, international institutions, and nonprofit organizations globally, including here in Canada. Canada shares the values that the Aga Khan promotes, compassion, pluralism, human rights, and respect for diversity. We recognize the important role that the values play in building the diverse, generous, and prosperous country that we call home. We are proud to have bestowed honorary Canadian citizenship on the Aga Khan and honored to host both the Aga Khan Museum in Toronto and the Global Centre for Pluralism in Ottawa. Ismaili Muslims have enriched our national fabric in countless ways over the years. Today, as we work together to fight the global pandemic, they are stepping up by donating cloth masks to essential workers, providing non-perishable food items to food banks, and making vital blood donations in support of National Blood Donor Week. I hope all Canadians take the time to recognize the many contributions Ismaili Canadians have made and continue to make to our society. On behalf of our family, Sophie and I extend our heartfelt congratulations to His Highness on the anniversary of his accession as Imam and thank him for his noble and important work. Kushali Mubarak. Now, as we celebrate today the long-standing partnership between the Ismaili Imamat and Canada, we offer a brief glimpse into some of the major milestones of that relationship and the deep affection that His Highness holds for this country. It's reflected in the numerous institutions and initiatives that have been established by the Ismaili Imamat and the Ismaili community over almost half a century. I hope you enjoy it. Many of you may remember that my personal involvement with Canada dates back more than three decades, when at a time of great upheaval in Uganda, many members of the Ismaili community and others found here a new home in which they could quickly rebuild their lives. Under the leadership of Prime Minister Pierre Trudeau and expressing habits of mind and spirit which have long been central to the Canadian character, this country provided a welcoming haven to those who had been victimized by history. Since that time, Ismailis from other parts of the world have also come to Canada, contributing not only to Canadian society, but also to the diverse mosaic of the global Ismaili community. Your Royal Highness, only here do you have a French-speaking Prime Minister of Irish origin from Quebec, opening an Ismaili Centre in British Columbia designed by an architect 
of Italian Catholic origin. And I think, Your Royal Highness, that that says it better than perhaps statistics or anything else. What Canada is all about, a sense of tolerance and dignity. And I know that I speak on behalf of everyone here and all Canadians in uh, extending to you, Your Royal Highness, and to your party the warmest welcome here today and to tell you and your people how proud we are that you have chosen Canada. Today in Canada and throughout the world, through the in industry of individual Ismailis and the assistance of the Aga Khan Foundation for which we salute you, you are building religious centers, hospitals and schools and sharing your energy and your industry and your vision with all of us. Your religious center stands today as a proud and a noble symbol of your commitment to the beauty and eternal values of all human religion based on love and respect and hope and of Canada's commitment to the effervescent variety of life. Indeed, the decision to establish this significant initiative in Canada reflects the deep and long-standing partnership between the Imamat and Canada. This partnership stems from our shared commitment to pluralism, to civil society, human dignity, peace and understanding. And the impressive facility we are inaugurating today is not the first contribution the Aga Khan has made to the Canadian urban landscape. At their very best, museums help us see the world differently, educating us, enlightening us, and challenging our views and opinions. Museums, in fact, showcase our stories. They tell Canadians, as well as visitors to Canada, about where we come from and about the values that shaped us as a society. For Canada, through the generations, those values have included pluralism, human rights, democracy, and the rule of law. The institution that we are celebrating today will no doubt be influential in promoting those values. The Aga Khan Museum will be the first of its kind in North America dedicated to presenting the arts of Islam in all their historic and geographic diversity. Ladies and gentlemen, today marks the beginning of yet another chapter in the ambitious efforts of His Highness the Aga Khan and the Ismaili community in Canada. And in these tumultuous times, those values are needed more than ever. This is a true 21st century space, one that's steeped in history, but that speaks to our modern vision of a global, inclusive, and peaceful society. One of the things that I most appreciate about, appreciate about the Aga Khan Museum is that it promotes values of cultural diversity, intercultural peace and tolerance, all so critical to a pluralistic society such as our own. These are values that we hold dear in Ontario and values that are shared by His Highness the Aga Khan. In Ontario, we believe diversity is one of our greatest strengths and education and pluralism are key to building a peaceful and prosperous world. That's why I'm very pleased that today also the province of Ontario and the Ismaili Imamat signed a historic agreement of cooperation which reinforces our mutual commitment to these values. Canada has an opportunity, a responsibility perhaps, to demonstrate how pluralism is a viable and perhaps the only path to lasting peace and prosperity. Canada is a constantly evolving experiment. It's a social experiment, it's a social innovation, and it's a bit challenging because it's an experiment in inclusiveness and making pluralism work. And this is what positions us to help to tell the pluralism story, not just here in Canada, but around the world. And Your Highness, that's why your work in the Global Center for Pluralism is so essential both for the Canadian experiment and for our capacity for people everywhere to live with difference, to live pluralism. 
qui a permis de fonder, il y a plusieurs années, le Centre mondial du pluralisme en partenariat avec le gouvernement du Canada. Il est particulièrement remarquable d'avoir anticipé, il y a de cela au moins 15 ans, le besoin de promouvoir le respect de la diversité dans la société, lequel est depuis devenu un des grands enjeux planétaires. The vision of the Global Center for Pluralism is a world in which human differences are valued and diverse society thrive. This is Canada's vision for our country and for our world. This is why our government stands behind the center and its so many worthy initiatives. I'd also like to extend a sincere thank you, of course, to His Highness for sharing the gift, this amazing gift of this beautiful garden with all of Albertans and, in fact, Canada. Um, I know that people from around the world are even going to want to come and see this. Um, this wonderful Aga Khan garden is an expression of the concepts of peace and cultural understanding. What I love about the garden is that it allows us to experience peace and tolerance in a truly immersive way. We may come from a wide range of cultures, of beliefs and backgrounds, but when we experience the sights, the sounds and the harmony of nature, it reminds us of our common humanity. The fact that this new addition is a unique coming together of a traditional Islamic gardens in Alberta's northern climate is a further reminder, as David said, that we can use our differences to create something beautiful and something lasting. I trust that everyone who visits the Aga Khan Garden will come away with a deeper under appreciation and a stronger understanding of all that we can achieve through peace and cooperation. I believe that Canada is uniquely able to articulate and exemplify three critical underpinnings of a quality civil society. A commitment to pluralism, to meritocracy, and to a cosmopolitan ethic. A cosmopolitan ethic is one that welcomes the complexity of human society. It balances rights and duties freedom and responsibility. It is an ethic for all peoples, the familiar and the other, whether they live across the street or across the planet. The Arkan Development Network has worked over five decades to assist in the enhancement of civil society. And as we look to its future, we are honored that Canada views us as a valued partner. Thank you, Prime Minister. Thank you for that wonderful production. Before I introduce the final segment of today's special event, I want to extend to each of you, on behalf of the delegation of the Ismaili Imamat, our deepest gratitude for taking time out of your busy schedules to join us. We are deeply appreciative of your support, partnership, and friendship, and we look forward to our continued association for many, many years to come. We're going to leave you with some fodder for the spirit, some inspiration for the soul in the form of a musical treat. Thank you again so much for joining us. Good evening and Imamath de Mubarak. Tea house music, or we call silk and bamboo music, is a big part of Chinese traditional music culture. And I grew up with this pentatonic sort of scale and you know, always stay in my head every day. And in this particular piece, I asked Philas to join me on his canoe. So I just want you to imagine you know, you're somewhere in courtyard in my hometown, Hangzhou, and sit back, relax, and drink green tea.